welcome to 1923 Main Street. Home of the Daddy Daughter Disney Travel Podcast. We're your hosts. I am Mike Bellabranic. And I'm Amelia Bellabranic. And today we're going behind the scenes of some of our favorite and least favorite rides all around the parks. What do you mean our least favorite? Some of these are your least favorite rides. There's something we're going to talk about that is your least favorite. Yes. I did not know that. So when it comes up, you you point it out to me and I won't take you on it anymore. Now, yeah, we're talking about not really backstories, but behind the scenes stories. We thought we'd have a little fun, especially if you love sort of Disney trivia or the backstories. Like, how did this ride even happen? Why is this ride here? Because a lot of the early rides, which we talked about in our episode on branding, aren't necessarily related to Disney properties. But did you know, before we begin, that Disneyland was not the first park Walt ever thought of doing? Really? Actually, there there was something even before a park. So Walt's idea, his first idea beyond movies, was to do something called Disneylandia, he called it. Like Disneyland with an I-A on the end. And you know Walt loved trains, right? He had, As one should. He has trains at home. We have trains in all the parks. I like the trains. I don't think the trains get enough credit in the parks. The Walt Disney World Railroad or Disneyland Railroad. But anyway, Walt had this idea that he was going to put together little exhibits, like sort of like miniature villages, you know, stuff like that, on train cars and drive this around the U.S. and stop in cities for a week and people would come to Disneylandia and see whatever he'd put together. What went wrong? Well, when they started actually looking into how to do it, the train routes were the problem. It's not like driving a car where you can go anywhere and stop in any town. You had to go where the railroad tracks were. And it, the, the logistics of trying to do this was almost impossible for him to sort of get to all the cities he wanted to get to by train. If only America conformed to Disney. Exactly. Come on. Come on, train people. But in the end, so Disneylandia died on the shelf. And then he had another idea for a theme park before Disneyland, actually. And it was going to be called the Riverside Drive Park. And it was across from his studio lot on Riverside Drive. So this was going to be a little type of mini theme park with, of course, trains and riverboats and horse and carriage rides. You know, just sort of fun little park, Disney style. And of course, a lot of those things are in Disney parks now. But then... Disneyland finally came along. Finally. But there were other things. In fact, I want to talk about... The Mineral King Ski Resort. No, but it is related. You know about the Disney's Mineral King Ski Resort, do you? I know about everything. No, you don't. I'm going to quiz you a bit later on one thing I'm pretty sure you don't know about. Yeah, so Disney's Mineral King Ski Resort. Another thing that didn't happen. But out of that came one of the attractions that's in Disney parks right now, and I bet you can't guess what it is. No guesses? A, a boat ride? I don't know. No, I know. I was... Sc- well, <laughs> I, I just thought, skiers. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Blizzard Beach. That's not an attraction, though. Yeah, that's true. It's a park. Anyway, <laughs> so this Disney Mineral King Ski Resort was going to be in California, and one of the things that was planned to be in that was Country Bear Jamboree. Why? Uh, Well, it was going to be, I guess, sort of a rustic lodge, almost like Wilderness Lodge, probably. Like a show. But it never happened. So lo and behold, they never gave up on that idea of Country Bear Jamboree. And it was reborn, as we know it in Disney World now, and the Bears of Grizzly Hall were created and reused. But it's sort of neat. But it also posed another problem for Imagineers. It was the first time that... They would have these animatronics on stage all the time instead of just, you know how Big Al comes on and then they close the curtain. So you're not looking at them all the time. But, you know, from Country Bear Jamboree, there's when the main stage is going, all the bears are always on there. But they had to be... Because they're the stars of the show. Yeah, but only one or two are singing at times. So this was the first time that Disney Imagineers had to create making something look lifelike in the background. And where else did they go on to use that? The Hall of Presidents. Yes, the Hall of Presidents. Although I wonder what the audition process was like for those bears. Like, hey, you want to be an animatronic singing bear at our park? You're making fun of me, but that thought is actually going to come up a bit later in another one. (laughs) I just thought of something else. There was another park in California that was never built. They were going to build 
In fact, they were working on an oceanfront park. Well, he's just nonstop. In Long Beach, California. But it never happened. But, like, just like Country Bear, Tokyo Disney Sea, which we have not been to and is the one I really want to go to, a lot of Tokyo Disney Sea was lifted from sort of the plans they had for this California waterfront theme park. So I guess they never waste ideas. Well, certainly not. Otherwise, I'll steal them for myself. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about, I think you like this ride, Space Mountain. Yeah. Now, what do you think was unique about Space Mountain? I don't know. It takes place in space? That is part of it. He, Walt, of course, was fascinated with rockets. He had a big rocket in Disneyland and Tomorrowland by rocket itself. Rocket roller coaster. Ooh, that, <laughs> that would have been a good name for it. No, I don't know if you know this, but it was the first ever roller coaster indoors in, 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 in America the world, in the world it's the first time really and if you can imagine you know they started thinking about that this in the 60s it opened in 1975 in Disney World but they had to figure out how to do it how do we build an indoor roller coaster so Is that, that right yeah it, it was pretty cool and it took 11 years it was actually Walt Disney's idea And it's the sad part is he wasn't alive to see it. He had this idea for a space mountain that would be an indoor rocket ride because it wanted to be in the dark, right? Because it's space. So nobody had ever done an indoor roller coaster before, but it took 11 years for them to figure out how to do it. It's a long time. It's a long time. They were building plans and the first plan that I think John Hench, he's an Imagineer, they showed him these plans and it had, you know how the outside of Space Mountain at Walt Disney World has those lines? Yeah. Th- those are braces. Oh. The first the first plan for it, they were on the inside and he said, "No, we can't do that because then you, we can't project stars and space on it. You'll see these bumps." So he and that the, so they, he made them redesign it so that they would be on the outside and anyway, it sort of took form. But that's pretty cool. Space Mountain, the first ever indoor roller coaster in the world. Not bad, Disney. And another ride, another little back not backstory, but behind-the-scenes story, Jungle Cruise. Ah, everyone's favorite ride. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm actually glad Jungle Cruise is now, they're making a movie and and they've changed, you know, they've taken out some of the contentious content in the ride. Like Trader Sam, he's now gone. So they're making it a bit more modern day, right? But the ride itself was inspired by a movie called The African Queen. So it wasn't, again, there was no Disney property Don't around Don't they it. still have Trader Sam's? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if they change that name. We'll set, We'll have to see. We'll await our response. But Walt, you'll like this one. He loved, lo- Walt Disney loved animals, and he wanted alive animals for Jungle Cruise. So I don't know if you... What rem- happened? I don't know if you remember it, because we haven't been on it for a long time. But I'll remind you, there's a there's one part where there's elephants sort of in a waterfall taking a bath and all this stuff. Yes. And actually, he was going to say that some of the joke, it, it's got corny jokes, Jungle Cruise, right? So hopefully they're rewriting the script. But I think there was a line once that said, oh, don't be shy. He's wearing his trunks or they're wearing their trunks or something. But then they scrapped that joke because it wouldn't work in different languages. You know how you can't make the same jokes in different languages? Oh, I just... The, just... Yeah, you just got the joke. <laughs> Oh, the elephants are having a bath, but it's okay. They're wearing, they've got their trunks on or something like that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so Walt wanted live elephants. He wanted the animals in Jungle Cruise to be real, like yeah. elephants and hippopotamus. But there was a lot of back and forth I, from what I read for quite a while because the Imagineers were going, Walt, you can't tell elephants. They're not going to be performing, right? Those they're not... Imagineers. Yeah. Have, so... they, have they never seen Dumbo? Well, they said they're not like the horses on Main Street, you know. They will do what you want a hundred times over and over the same thing. So you can't have real animals on Jungle Cruise. Such a buzzkill, those Imagineers. But, you know, in his memory, when Animal Kingdom came along, they at least they got to bring Walt's love for animals to life in a positive way. That Well, was, thank goodness for that. Yeah, good, good for the animals and <laughs> followed a little bit up on Walt's vision. So that's a fun little story about Jungle Cruise. Now, I think you know this one. This one, I think, is so cool. So we talk about the People Mover a lot. And I like the People Mover. I love the People Mover. When, Some... when you're little, it's the way to get on Space Mountain. Oh, that's right. Before you could ride it, you get a little sneak peek. One time we got 
we were lucky to get stopped in there when the lights are on, if you remember. And you can see yeah. the whole tracks. It's fun to see Space Mountain. It's also fun to ride Space Mountain in the complete dark. Remember they did that at the <gasps> Halloween yes. party? If you've never done this, people, when they shut all the lights off on Space Mountain, I mean pitch black, it's very cool. They do that at the not-so-scary Halloween party sometimes. Although I do have to or say... Or was it Villains After Hours? It was One Villains After things. Hours. Yeah. Although I do have to say, if you have extra good cat eyes, you might still see some. Yeah, but it's pretty cool in the pitch dark. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I digress. Back to the people mover. So, people, do you know... How to move? No, where the idea came from for the people mover. He didn't just make it up on his own. He well, was He was inspired by a very specific thing. Do you know what that was? Well, I will tell you, just in case you don't... So Walt, you know, he used to be fascinated when he was around with like mechanics and how things were built. So one day he was at the Ford car plant and they were looking at how the bodies of the metal cars were being constructed. Can you ride in those? In what? The, no, you can't ride in them when they're being constructed. But there were these, I forget what you call them, but they were big. They're like long red hot metal rods. And these red hot metal rods were moving on this sort of magnetic rollers that run the people yeah. mover, right? They were moving along and Walt, you know, they're looking at the cars and of course Walt's looking up and he, and he said to someone, hey, one of his Imagineers, do you think we could use that to move people? Yeah, as one does. Yeah. So the that, people you've mover. You've never done that? You've never looked at a big machine and said, can I go on that? No, but he was saying, hey, would that move people? Which is funny, the people mover. He's a genius. <laughs> so the Imagineers literally took what he said and <laughs> named the attraction. Uh, but isn't that funny? So the people mover literally was inspired by well, Ford, genius. Ford motor cars and how they moved boiling hot, like red hot metal rods. So that's a little bit of behind story, behind the scenes story for how the people mover came to be. So he wanted to move people around, but that was leading edge for him. Another fast moving thing. I want to hop over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. One Rocket Roller Coaster. Now, not Rocket. Oh, you're going to call it Rocket Roller Coaster? From now on, that's his new name. Well, now that you, so you're combining Space Mountain and Rocket, which of those two do you like better? Rocket. <laughs> There's no question. And Rocket Roller Coaster. Now, we've talked many times. Poor Disney's Hollywood Studios is <laughs> just thrown together, and it's the best park. It, yeah, I know you love it, and but it's funny, like things, and now it has Galaxy's Edge. It's unbeatable. So this rock and roller coaster does have some cool factor to it, sort of like Space Mountain being in the dark. But the whole reason it came up is they were, you know, they built the park, and then they're going, hmm. I think for entertainment, we need some music. We need music to be represented. And that's how that's how Rock and Roller Coaster, the idea for it came about. But Sometimes the best ideas are when you're looking for an idea. Well, this is why, remember when we were talking about rebranding stuff in that episode a while back. So if they rebrand it and they don't make it music related... They'll actually take, like if they did Zootopia, as I kept picking on mm. in that episode. But if they, if they rebrand it away from music, they'll actually go away from the original reason they created it, which is neither here nor there, I guess, but sort of interesting nonetheless. But well, it's there. What was the claim to fame of Rockin', do you think, for Disney? Aerosmith. No, the ride itself. It was Disney's first, and is it only, well, in, the, in Disney World, looping roller coaster. Oh, yeah. It's the first one that they went upside down. It actually goes upside down three times. It's the only one, and I have some debates about this, Disney. Where are our other upside down coasters? Yeah. Where's our that's vilified why... villains coaster that we keep asking for in this podcast? And that's why Hyperspace Mountain is the best one. Yeah, Hyperspace Mountain is much better. Disneyland Paris. If you go there, you will see how awesome that ride is. Now, it has another claim to fame, of course. The created and launched and and used this linear induction motor which in lay terms is what allows you to go from 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds and then they've used that a lot since then right they use it on all good rides well what's another one can you name one more that uses that hyperspace mountain yes or that's, does it yes it does that's one more there. california adventure previously known as california screaming i, I know 
know, the Incredicoaster. Yes, the Incredicoaster uses it. And does, I can't even think, does Slinky Dog use it? No, it oh. doesn't go. No, uh, <laughs> does uh, Slinky Dog does, go does it have a mild? It does halfway through, right? Does Slinky Dog go from zero to 60 in no. three seconds? I don't think no. so. No, 2.8. <laughs> so Rockin has its own fun little side story. All these things that aren't actually Disney themed obviously have little stories that come from other places. Another one, well, this one is now Disney themed, but it wasn't originally Star Tours. And Star Tours, first of all, here's a little fun thing to watch for in the ride. You know, when you go through the line and there's all the droids and there's yeah. paging in the background, sort of like in Tomorrowland when they go paging Mr. Tom Morrow. Yeah. You know that? Tomorrow, Tom Morrow. If if I had a kid with someone named Morrow, I would totally name them Tom. But pay attention next time you're on Star Tours because you'll hear Egrog Sakul being paged. Egrog Kahu? Egrog Sakul. And Egrog Sakul backwards is George Lucas. Ah. Yeah, so there's a fun little one. Maybe record it and use it. If it's clear enough, we can record it and use it as a ringtone or something. But yeah. But the ride itself... And I'm going to quiz you here in a second. The ride itself was created from flight simulators. So Air Force flight simulators, that's where they got the idea for how to do those cars in Star Tours. And there's another ride that was created from a simulator that you like, I think. Mission Space. Mission Space. Well, they don't actually go to space, which I have some concerns about. But it was based on the NASA astronaut test environment so that's why it's pretty authentic they that's say it's false the, advertising they say it's the closest thing to actual space g that you can get without going into space so it's false advertising i was promised a trip to space and i cannot handle that anymore and i still and i'm still on the ground like what are we disney come on on the is it orange is that the good one yes. <laughs> orange is the good one yeah orange is the good one i, th I believe okay here's my quiz for you this is one of my favorite fun facts it's one of my it's one of the things I wish, I really, really wish they actually did. We're talking about Animal Kingdom Park, all right? Let me set the stage. Your Animal Kingdom Park, as it is now, you're walking up to it. What's the entrance like? Okay. You just, yeah, it's okay. It's nothing special, right? You walk in, you go through the gates. It's an entrance. But the famous Imagineer, Joe Rode, who just retired, and he did a lot of great stuff in recent years. He had a concept, and there's artwork that shows this, for the entrance to Animal Kingdom that I wish they did. I, th I think it would have been so cool. And you want me to tell you what it is? Giant animals? No, it was a Noah's Ark. If you can imagine walking up to Animal Kingdom and having a gigantic ark sort of crashed with a hole in it, you know what's in Noah's so the, Ark? The animals. Yes. That's the whole point. His point was the Ark had crashed and the animals escaped, yes, I guess. Exactly. So Wouldn't, therefore giant animals. Yeah, but do you don't you think that would be a cool entrance? Yes, well, Disney has put itself to shame multiple times by not doing all these awesome I know. ideas. Oh, Animal Kingdom has so many. We talked about the Tree of Life was gonna have a lookout and a restaurant. Whole, we do a whole episode on Good ideas that Animal Kingdom doesn't do, and that's why it's or just Disney one of didn't the worst do. Books. Yeah, there's there's tons of them. I mean, we've mentioned, but I thought you'd be more excited about this arc idea. I don't know if any of you listening but it are. It didn't I'm, happen. I know, but <laughs> look up the artwork if you haven't if you have never seen it. Why? Just to make me sad that it it's, didn't happen. It's, I'm looking. I go. That is so cool. Why didn't you do that? Was it like too religious or something? I don't know. I, I really, I just don't know why they. Because now it's just. It's like a park entrance. You go through the gates, and and I guess they could have had it inside, maybe where the oasis starts, or Discovery Island, and you know. But anyway, it's it's a cool one that they never did. And Soren is another one that's sort of neat. What's neat about Soren? So, so they wanted to have a flight, right? They wanted this ride with flight, but they were trying to figure out how to do it. So they should have called it Soren Flying. One of the Imagineers, have you ever, you know those little erector sets? They're little metal and you can make things out of them. Have you ever, have you ever seen yes, those? Yes, of course. Well, it's sort of like a metal version of Lego, right? Where you can, kids can play around. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Imagineer actually, and there's pictures of this too floating around, created it on this and it even wound up and the whole thing lifted up, how the seats worked and all that. Okay, so, that's, pr that's pretty cool. Yes, yeah, Soren was created at this Imagineer's house on his kids' <laughs> erect or his own little toy set. And it, they go, it's amazing how the, much the actual one looks like this one that was created. 
And then they, but they weren't sure if it was really going to work. So they built one in BC here in Canada, in British Columbia. They built, they had a big tent and they mocked up a version of what's how Soren would work to test it out. There was something from Disney in Canada. Yeah, because, yeah. Can we move to British Columbia? They used to have a Disney here in Mississauga. But anyway. They what? They what? An office. But anyway, I digress. So they built this, but I think you'll appreciate this. So they were testing it out to see if it would work. They had this movie projected, and the thing went up, and people were riding, and there was one thing that happened that they knew this is going to work. And I think... You've done this, or we've seen people do this. You know the scenes, some of the scenes, especially in the original Soarin' Over California, there used to be a golf ball flying at you, and yeah. you'd go down over the water. They saw people lift up their feet so they wouldn't get wet. And they said, now it's going to work. If you could hear, I snapped. There it is. <laughs> so that was their cool thing. They knew it was going to work when they saw people lift up their feet to avoid the water. Or in one case, lift up their hand as a Mary Poppins umbrella. Well, that's you, because you want to soar out of your soaring seat. Yes, exactly. I'm soaring. I'm my. I'm. It's my attempt to fly. You're soaring. Whatever that means. Now, I'm going to close out this episode, or at least come to the end of my part. If you want to add anything, for one of the sort of neat, neatest little fun facts that I don't know if people really understand or even really think about the beauty of these you don't really think about them until you start to think about them and then you say hey yeah how-? and then you can't fall asleep so disney fireworks shows around the world have it's changed you ever, exponentially have you ever wondered how they do that how they time everything so perfectly to the music how fireworks break blow explode the way they do well, I don't when know they how, do well i don't know how fireworks work but I, I assume it's quite complicated well the simple way to say it is they added to get the shows to work the way they want to and they're pretty elaborate now as you know we've seen them change over time they have computer chips in them in each y- firework yeah, in each firework so when you talk how about how expensive ha- exact- must that be exactly there's microchips to it so that the bursts are precisely timed to coordinate with the music in the show yeah and they go and they blow up so that's <laughs> that's got to be quite expensive there. You know, I remember somebody once I was having some online discussion and somebody was at a Disney thing and they were watching, you know, I think it was Wishes at the time, right? And oh, they were wishes. watching it. Now forget the our fact. Our fallen friend. Yeah, our fallen friend. Now forget the fact that, yeah, there's microchips and there's all, all the expense and everything that goes into fireworks shows. But this person said, eh, so what? No big deal. The fireworks in Australia and Sydney at New Year's are better than that. And I mean, I've never seen the fireworks in Sydney, Australia at New Year's, but my response was, yeah, but do they put those fireworks on every Every single day? (laughs) Every single, well, not in the last year, but do they put them on, yeah, every single day for 50 years? I don't think so. I'm guessing not. So yeah, it's quite a feat when, and then you sort of consider all the stuff that actually goes into doing these fireworks with microchips, timing to the music and all that sort of stuff. Not to mention money, yeah, time and money. So, I, you know, I'm sure floating around somewhere is how much each each fireworks show costs. Kind of want to know now. Okay, we'll have to look that up and post it. Put it in the show notes. All right, that's all I have. I just want to do a fun little... What did you find the most interesting? I'm intrigued to know. Well, first of all, I'm intrigued to know what of these do you not like? Jungle Cruise. Oh, you don't like Jungle Cruise? We've covered this. Maybe that's because you haven't gone on it for a long time. How about we go on it again next time? Because I admit, I don't like to go on it a lot either. They have like university level sophisticated jokes. Like, how am I supposed to get this? Yeah, they're, they're going to redo the script. So we'll see if it's still Those corny. trunk jokes. Like, how? Those are just so advanced. You'll be walking around the park 10 minutes later. One of those goes, oh, I get it. <laughs> it's oh, like yeah. the zombie joke you didn't get the other day. What was the zombie joke? Do you even remember it? Yeah, what do you get? What do zombies get from Dairy Queen? What do zombies get from Dairy Queen? A handshake. A handshake. (laughs) And Amelia goes, and I go, don't you get it? Because zombies like eat hands, so the handshake instead of a milkshake. (laughs) So the Dairy Queen doesn't sell milkshakes. So is the, (laughs) so is the, which joke's better, the handshake or the trunks? The trunks. The trunks, the Disney I got that on my own, so. All right, which of these things was the coolest? Um... I think the people mover. 
might be the coolest. I like the mover. I personally like Space Mountain because it was the first. Yeah. It yeah, was that, the first ever. That is pretty neat. You know, you think of stuff. It's, it's Magic all Kingdom the, was the most innovative. Really? Like, and here you are always dissing the Magic Kingdom. It's not my yet. least favorite. L- look at all the innovation that came out of those original parks. Now everyone takes it for granted at Universal and everywhere else. Ah, indoor roller coasters. All this stuff was pioneered by Disney. And yeah, this one you guys in partic- are just copycats. <laughs> and this one in particular, Walt Disney, he actually came up with that idea. And unfortunately, he wasn't around to see it come to life. So, yeah. But I really like how Walt's sitting there in Ford and they're looking and he's looking up at this boiling hot metal gun and he's saying, hey, you think we could make that thing move people? <laughs> <laughs> so he was always thinking about stuff. They got stuff. so creative with that name, too. Yes. The people mover. Well, it's the, simple, it's concise, It used to be the to TTA, the, the Tomorrowland Trans... It used to be called the Wedway People <laughs> Mover, because that was Walter Elias Disney. His oh. Wed was what he called his... When he broke away from the movie part of the company, he started Wed Enterprises, his secret project, which ultimately led to Disneyland. And I think also Noah's Ark. I wish that happened. Yeah. I When I see the artwork, I go, man, that would have been so cool. It just fits right in, so neat. But alas... The things, they have so many ideas, they can't do them all. All right, everyone, we hoped you we hoped you learned something new, and now you can be the one who knows all the cool Disney stuff, or a little bit more of it. I'm sure many of you already know lots of cool Disney stuff, but hopefully there was something here you didn't know before that we shared with you this week. So listen, everyone, check us out on social media at 1923 Main Street. We love interacting with you all, and we will see you again next week. So have a magical day, everyone. Bye-bye.